Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on DNA. DNA, its role and characteristics. What is this stuff? What does it do? Most people know basically what DNA is, but we're going to get into a lot of the detail about how it actually functions in cells. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. There's the DNA. So nucleic acids are a general class of compounds. Um, RNA is another kind. That's in the next lesson on RNA. But DNA contains the instructions for life. It has the codes for how cells do everything, how they maintain homeostasis, how they function, um, how they physically are, and they're able to retain their, their functionality and form because of DNA. This, of course, is the substance that's copied and passed on to daughter cells when it divides. This is what keeps life going. Um, that might seem like common knowledge now, and it is in the scientific community, but 60 years ago, that wasn't so common. All proteins that cells make can be traced back to the code in DNA. Um, so really, DNA codes for protein. Proteins are so important in cells, very prolific um, in terms of what they do structurally and what they do chemically. Um, proteins really are how DNA is expressed uh, in cells. Double helix, I put that in capital letters because this is very important. Here's the double helix. This is that classic DNA shape. Helical is spiral, double helix, because it's pretty much two spirals attached at the center. Uh, this is the shape it is. When we look at this particular structure, when we discuss cell division, there's a lot of the double helix in here. This is a heck of a lot bigger than this. Here we're looking at just several pairs of nucleotides attached together. I'll tell you more about nucleotides in a sec. But in the 46 of these that you would see in a human cell that's about to divide, there are 3 billion nucleotide pairs in, in all 46 combined. So there's, I mean, hundreds if not thousands of genes um, in these various uh, chromosomes. So this, structurally a lot smaller than this. Made of nucleotides. So when we look down this backbone of DNA on each side, it's nucleotide attached to nucleotide attached to nucleotide. And across the center, the nucleotides of these two strands are attached. And more details about that later on in the lesson. These strands are anti-parallel, meaning they go in opposite directions. Um, I'm making my arms parallel, but it's really like this in DNA. A better way to look at it is, got two pens here, two identical looking pens. This would be parallel. It's a mathematics term. I'm making them as parallel as I possibly can. Here's what anti-parallel means, that this strand, as it, as it curves around and this one curves connected to it, this is red in the opposite direction. This strand is red in the opposite direction of the, the strand it's attached to. So that's what anti-parallel means. Don't think it means perpendicular. No, it just means these are parallel strands that are red in opposite directions. And there are terms for that directionality, three prime and five prime coming up later in the lesson. It's self-replicating. Enzymes that are naturally found in cells and, and DNA actually codes for those enzymes uh, allow DNA to be copied. And as long as you have those little nucleotides available, they can be put next to the other strand and, and new strands can be made. And that has to happen before a cell divides. Codons, genes, and chromosomes, these terms have to do with what DNA is made up of. And I'll give you an analogy. A codon is a set of three bases, three nucleotides side by side. And you find these uh, in DNA and RNA. This is like a word in the genetic sentence. A bunch of codons together, a whole sequence of them, I mean, it could be a hundred codons or more, can code for a gene. And a gene is like a sentence. A bunch of codons together forms a gene. A bunch of genes together, and we're talking a lot of genes, would make a whole chapter of this book. And a chromosome is kind of like a chapter. I actually read this really good book about DNA that is in 23 chapters. Surprise, surprise, because 23 is the haploid number for humans. 
23 pairs equals our diploid number, 46 chromosomes. Um, so chromosome, a giant package of these genetic sentences. They are made up of words that are known as codons. More about that, especially when you get to the RNA lesson.